So I had some concern about publishing this attack that's never happened, that really is quite nasty. And so I contacted the Canadian authorities and I said, do you think it's wise that I tell the world about this kind of attack? Hello and welcome to Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. I'm Andrew Ginter with Waterfall Security Solutions and we are working our way through the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. In this series, we're using the top 20 attacks as a ruler to compare the strength of security posture for two different kinds of security program for a hypothetical target, a water treatment plant won a 2013 vintage security program with a lot of software protection. All of the best practice that was advised in 2013, no matter how difficult or expensive those best practices might have been. The second security posture is that same posture with one addition, and that is a, a more modern piece of advice we see in all the modern and security standards, which is a unidirectional gateway deployed at the ITOT interface, replacing the ITOT firewall. Now the only way to connect from the industrial network to the world is through this unidirectional gateway. Today's attack is number 10, a cellular Wi-Fi scanner. At Waterfall, we work with some of the world's most secure industrial sites. These sites are deeply suspicious of wireless networks. Why? Because of this kind of attack I'm about to describe. People often ask, um, you know, this, these attacks, these top 20, did they come from real life? Are they based on real incidents? This one is not. This one is hypothetical. And in my books, it really is quite nasty. So I had some concern about publishing this attack that's never happened, that really is quite nasty. And so I actually contacted my, you know, I'm, I'm in Canada, I contacted the Canadian authorities and I said, do you think it's wise that I tell the world about this kind of attack? because you know it's never happened and I don't know. Their response was, we have been trying to tell our critical infrastructures for the last five years about this kind of threat and have been you know, without success. So yes, please document this attack. So here it is. We have a, an organization that has resources. Uh, it might be a nation state, you know, it might be organized crime, but they have resources and they have written their own cell phone app. It's an attractive app. It's one that they give away for free. Imagine that it's, I don't know, the world's fanciest free flashlight app or something. Hundreds of thousands of people download it. And the app, you know, does all the flashlight stuff and it does something extra. Conventional apps, if you've got conventional malware on your app, you install a free app and it asks for access to your contacts and your pictures and your email and your on and on and on. And you know, really it's spyware. Well, this is asking for permission to use uh, you know, certain resources, but they're fairly benign. It's the network. So the app gets installed and uh, people are carrying it around on their cell phones. They're walking into industrial sites all over the world on their cell phones. Now, most industrial sites, even if they use encrypted Wi-Fi, we're talking best practice 2013 vintage, nobody is going to connect their cell phones to industrial control system Wi-Fi access points. That makes no sense. So when these cell phones are walking around an industrial site, they still have a cell signal, they're still connected to the internet, but they're not using the Wi-Fi. And so the malware, the, the fake app, um, can use the, the Wi-Fi hardware, the Wi-Fi subsystem, to scan for Wi-Fi access points. And when it finds Wi-Fi access points, presumably all of which are encrypted, that's 2013 best practice, when it finds these access points, it records the GPS location, the access point name, and the strength of signal. And it sends to a command and control center on the internet. And so these attackers in their command and control center are building up an inventory of all of the world's uh, you know, Wi-Fi access points uh, everywhere, encrypted or not. And now, when they decide to target somebody for, you know, attack number nine, a sophisticated uh, commodities market manipulation attack, when they decide to target someone, all they have to do is figure out where their target is located. Go to their database and say, okay, our target is this water treatment plant. There are 17 Wi-Fi access points within the boundaries of the water treatment plant. Now they can launch spear phishing attacks. They do their homework, they research their targets, they put together very well-crafted emails, and they tease out from these victims the passwords, the encryption credentials for 
the Wi-Fi access points. Now, the next time anyone, doesn't have to be the same person, anyone carries a compromised cell phone into those targets, the cell phone can raise an alert. You know, this is the, the malware. They, they send out to all of their hundreds of thousands of cell phone, whenever you come close to this GPS location, send me alert. The, uh, the command and control center gets the alert, I'm close, what do you want me to do? They look around and say, well, we've got credentials for six networks, let's try them. They interact remotely over the internet with the malicious software on the cell phone. They find that they're close to three of the networks, they use the credentials, they get into the industrial Wi-Fi using the stolen credentials through the cell phone that has been innocently carried into the site. Now they're inside the control system. They can drop remote access trojans, they can drop ransomware, they can do what they wish. They're inside. They, you know, they may have to look around, find credentials, they may have to do some work once they're inside. It may take several visits to do this, but they're in. In terms of sophistication, this is a very sophisticated attack. These people understand cyber hacking. They've built their own uh, compromised uh, cell phone app. That's a significant investment. They've made it attractive enough that people want to download it. That's a significant investment. They know how to manipulate these things remotely. They got a command and control center. You know, these people know what they're doing. Now, at this point, we have not determine what they're doing to the industrial control system. The range of sophistication there can range from, you know, simple, drop a bunch of ransomware and steal money, to uh, complex, which is, you know, find PLCs, cause malfunctions, damage equipment, cripple a, a critical infrastructure. And so the, there's a whole range of consequences here from almost certainly a plant shutdown, ransomware is gonna shut your plant down, to much more serious equipment damage or conceivably even safety issues. So we're using this attack to measure the strength of security program, to compare the strength of two security programs. The ruler that we're using is, does the security program reliably defeat this class of attack? So let's look at the 2013-based software-based security program. Um, the malware is on a cell phone. Classic security advice doesn't talk much about cell phones. Um, the malware is getting into the target using Wi-Fi networks. Classic security advice, you know, Vintage 2013 says, yeah, be a little careful with your Wi-Fi, make sure it's encrypted, then you're safe. Well, the malware has stolen the encryption credentials. Crypto systems will encrypt attacks from the cell phone just as readily as they will encrypt legitimate communications. Okay, crypto systems are, are attack agnostic. Encryption doesn't help us if we've compromised an endpoint and the endpoint has the credentials to log into the Wi-Fi network. Intrusion detection might catch this. The fact that there's a new device on the Wi-Fi network is a little suspicious, but it tends to be a low priority alert. Again, will that alert be acted on by the uh, the security operations center or have the attackers you know dropped a denial of service attack on the victim or dropped a bit of ransomware on the IT network to distract incident response teams from low priority alerts that might be coming in during this much more sophisticated attack we don't know the point is though that it's conceivable that many of these kinds of attacks will work and so the question of does the 2013 security posture reliably defeat this attack? No, no it doesn't. We expect that some of these, maybe all of these, are gonna get through depending on the, uh, you know, the cleverness of the attackers. Does the unidirectionally protected industrial network reliably defeat this attack? Well, we've replaced the ITOT firewall with a unidirectional gateway. We have the, uh, the cell phones being carried into the network. We have spear phishing going on in the IT network stealing passwords. The gateway doesn't in, isn't involved in any of that. Um, we have cell phones being carried back into the target and those credentials being used to connect to Wi-Fi networks. The unidirectional gateway is at the ITOT interface. It's not interacting with the Wi-Fi networks. We have the internet being used to route command and control through the cell phone into the Wi-Fi, into the target network to interactively drop malware, drop ransomware, do whatever. Again, it's bypassed the gateway. These Wi-Fi access points, because they they you know because we've carried this attack tool physically through the the security perimeter, the the gateway is part of the security perimeter. Doesn't help us. The unidirectionally protected uh, security program 
does not reliably defeat this attack either. Let's bring up our scorecard. We've got a failure on both of these programs. Neither of these programs detect and defeat this class of attack reliably. I told you it was a nasty one. Thanks for watching through the end of the video. If the series is working for you, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and don't forget to download the, uh, the Top 20 Attacks white paper. Uh, there's a link near the video wherever we've posted the video here. <laughs>